Hi, I'm Mike Crabb. And I'm Lori Schultz. Welcome Welcome to to the the show. show. We'll have some caffeinated conversation. And maybe some special guests along the way. Who Who knows knows where the conversation conversation will go? You're You're out out for for coffee coffee with Mike and and Lori. Hello, friends, and welcome to a new outdoor episode of Out for Coffee. With Mike and Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi, Mikey. It's beautiful out here, isn't it? It's nice and warm. We are back on Rob's kicking deck. Rob's big deck. Yeah. Rob's got a big deck. And it's a nice coffee kind of day, isn't it? Nice coffee day, yeah. This is my first uh, on this show is having a nice coffee. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rob. How you doing? I am doing well. Um, it's just stinking hot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and and it, it was really overcast when we got started this morning. Yeah. And then about halfway through setting up, that sun came out and it's game over. But Rob's uh-huh. got his uh, his Rocky Balboa yeah. look going today. I was thinking Olivia Newton-John. Oh, maybe but... yes. <laughs> Let's get physical. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Let's not say we did. Okay. okay. Well, it's a, it is a beautiful day, though. All in, yeah. There's a nice little breeze coming through now, which yeah. honestly wasn't here five minutes ago, so this is quite... Can you hear the crickets? It's, it's a summer day, isn't it? Why is it that crickets seem to really come into their prime, I suppose, like towards the end of August? Where are they the rest of the year? Underground? I don't know where Those a cricket lives. Those are cicadas, lives. aren't they? The last time, was it the last time we were here or the first time we were here? <laughs> mm-hmm. We had a cicada that just wouldn't shut it. Yeah. And now it's the crickets. <laughs> you know, when I first moved into my house yes. seven years ago, I had a cricket in the basement, living in the basement. Oh, no. Like the stowaway in the basement. And you could never find I it. I couldn't find this cricket, but my God, you could hear it throughout the whole house because at that time, I had nothing really in the basement. Right. <laughs> A lot of times have changed. <laughs> but this cricket was so loud. It, well, it was, it was overbattling your loudness. So. Right. It's a, it a battle of the louds. I can hear you. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. It's true. But now he's gone. I did find him eventually. Uh, well, we do have um, uh, uh, some lovely bees around today, too. So Rob's on swatter duty. Yeah. Uh, wasps, I should say, not bees. We we love our yeah, bees. Yeah. yeah. If um, if <laughs> something gets in my way, I'm I'm definitely gonna. You're on it. Get at it, cause man, I just they just bug me. So if you're watching, you might see this arm just reach across in front of the camera, with a and just swat something. <laughs> Could be Rob smacking me again. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, yeah. I am excited yeah. to be here today as well because Good we day. have a very wonderful uh, special guest and yes, friend of ours. Um, please welcome to Up for Coffee our good friend Deb Herb. Hi, Deb. Hey, how Deb, are you? Yeah, hi. <laughs> so Deb and I have uh, lots of working experience together. During my time at the theater, um, I would often produce shows, and I had uh, tons of opportunities to work with Deb. Mm-hmm. Um, it started off when we first worked together on our production of The Drowsy Chaperone, where you helped me with set design. That was fun. It was really cool. That was my first time. Doing a set design, Doing right? Doing set design, so yeah. Deb has tons of experience theatrically with uh, set making and prop making and costume making, and as well as a performer. Um, I was um, grateful for the opportunity to learn from you about those set designs, because those were my early days at the theater as well. And we did set design for Drowsy, and then the next year uh, we had worked on Grease together, where we did uh-huh. set for that as well. Now, what I loved about working with you, Deb, is um, I would often have prop-related questions for you, and you always had answers. <laughs> so tell me a bit about, tell us a bit about your theater experience and what, what you've been doing over all the years. Oh, my god! What got you started? Well, I think it was when uh, my oldest daughter, Sue, was very young. Uh, she got involved in a Christmas production at the church, and I ended up making a costume, and... And then she got kind of the theater bug, and she joined ACT Theater, which used to be here in town. Yeah. And I remember Greta Fairhead ran it, and she asked all the moms to make a costume for the Christmas float. Right. And I made Sue an Elvis costume out of a karate suit and a bathrobe I bought at the thrift <laughs> shop. <laughs> so I didn't have a pattern. Right. And Greta loved it, and she put me in charge of costumes for her shows after that. And so the whole costume area was kind of your, your stepping into production-based creativity, eh? Definitely, yeah. And uh, so in saying that, what has there been some shows over the years in particular that you've uh, loved or, or made special costume pieces for that 
um, stuck with you as kind of like something you've been very proud of? Hmm. <laughs> Gosh, there's so many. Uh, I loved working on Sweeney Todd yeah. for WCI. Yes, that's how Deb and I know each other is from our music theater program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sweeney Absolutely. Todd was great. <sighs> yeah. I think that was one of the best shows yeah. they ever did there. That was that was a load of fun. And yeah. a lot of fun with costumes, too. Right. Yeah. And right now you're currently working on some costumes as well, too, for, for some local shows as well, too. You brought a guest yeah. with you? Uh, I did. You want to show our audience? So here's the thing. To our audience, Deb, being such a visual creative person, um, uh, she she's um, we're gonna show some photos of stuff that she's talking about but if you're listening only right now uh, check out our social media channels because we're gonna be sharing a lot of Deb's work there um, so that you can see the incredible craftsmanship she has so with us who, who do we have right now Deb well this is Sven and uh, well, I'll just find the little ring down here so Sven is a character from Frozen yes and you crafted this puppet. So it is a, a puppet. So for our listening audience right now, too, it's Sven from Frozen, uh, who's a, a reindeer. Yes. And he, uh, right now we have his head because it's, it maneuvers. You have a little loop. Yeah. When you pull on it, he moves his mouth open and closed. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And it looks like it's to scale, like actual reindeer head size. Yeah. I tried wow. to make it kind of like reindeer. And yeah. there actually is a whole body that goes with this. Yes, that, I've uh, seen that. I've seen you post that on your, mm -hmm. on your Facebook. Yeah. Which is the evolution of Sven as yeah. it's gone. It's great. So I'll say one of the things um, that I've learned in my time at, at the theater is, is there's this 20 foot rule. When you make something, there's some forgiveness in, in the crafting of it because the audience is kind of far away in the lighting and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? So sometimes uh, little imperfections can get lost when you are looking at it from a distance. One thing you've always been consistent with, Deb, is things look even better the closer you get up yeah. almost because yeah. the amount mm -hmm. of fine detail, like the coloring you have around Sven's eye here, and his eyeball is like, it's like glazed, so it has like a glassy look to it. Yeah. Um, his nose looks very leathery. What did you use for this material? This is just a stretch vinyl. Okay. Huh. Yeah, with paint on top. And just glued down. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. um, and so I'm guessing a lot of the base to, to what we're seeing right now is probably some pool noodle and, and foam and oh, stuff like that. Oh, I love me some pool noodle. <laughs> Deb can do anything with a pool noodle. I'm going to talk really quick. When we were doing the drowsy chaperone and your job was set, yes. um, we needed a, uh, like a 20 foot long Chinese dragon that was coming out on stage for 30 seconds. Like it was yeah. a moment and I couldn't find one anywhere. And where do you even begin? Like, I don't know how to make something like that. And to make it would cost a fortune. And one thing Deb is amazing at is knowing how to work with uh, really um, inexpensive materials, pulling them all together. So this Chinese dragon was made out of hula hoops. Yeah. We Sweet. happened to go to Lens Mill to get the red fabric we needed. It happened mm -hmm. to be Valentine's Day. Yes. So all the red fabric was on sale. <laughs> so right. we really lucked out there. You spray painted the scales onto the body. Uh, we got some foam board from the dollar store that you glued together to make this head and you covered that in fabric, added all this tinsel and stuff. It was wild. And I think we made this entire dragon for like $40 was what it ended up being. Yeah. So it was- That's unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah. That's it was, amazing. It was great fun. So yeah. you do a really great job. So you got lots of uh, materials that when brought together and painted and, and detailed the way you do, it looks really beautiful. What, is, what are his horns made out of? Uh, these are foam again, uh, tubular foam. People use it around doors and windows. Like gap filler? Yeah. Like, okay. yeah, yeah. Stop. yeah. And I called them horns, but they're yeah. actually handlers, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but even still, it literally looks just yeah. like that detailing. It's crazy, Deb. And you just painted it? It looks like it's uh, almost yeah, stained it's got, on the ends. Uh, masking tape on it, and then I paper mache it a little bit and paint. Huh. Incredible. Now, mm -hmm. I would find that something like his, his jaw moving up and down uh, with this wire pulley system you have, that's got to be tricky figuring out the mechanics of something like that, would it not? You know, there's so much stuff on the internet to do a simple. Um, drawstring yeah. puppet okay that like i just sort of some yahoo no some youtube probably yeah yeah instructional find all sorts stuff of so i just yeah. look at that and figured it out and uh wow. use some popsicle sticks in there and tongue depressors and right. duct tape and yeah. you know all that kind of jazz that's and that's, there he is deb your skill set is so far 
beyond what mine would be for stuff <laughs> like this. To me, I would have the idea, okay, I'd, I'd want a reindeer. Mm. And that's about as far as I could take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want a life-size reindeer whose mouth moves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I would be like, Deb, go. <laughs> because that's how, like, I'm more of a big picture kind of person, right? Mm -hmm. But you're clearly a very patient, detail-oriented person. Yeah. I love getting into the detail. You give I do. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I used to. I yeah. used to. I, I'm going to put Sven down. Yeah, now. let him have yeah. a little rest. That's, sure. Bye, yeah. Sven. Um, the uh, one one of the my big lessons in my time at the theater too. I was doing Aladdin, which you weren't involved with uh, at the time, mm -hmm. and it was a couple weeks before, and I did need a, a hand with something, and and you had come in, and you helped me with this one project, but you saw. Um, you know, maybe this other set piece needed, like the Sultan's chair needed oh, just a little yes. something. <laughs> and and you brought your daughter Jenny along with you, who is also incredibly talented uh, artistically. And the two of you went to town and you're adding fringe onto the carts and like all these things that, you know, it looked good as it was, but suddenly you have all these fine details yeah. put into it. Yeah. And that was a lesson in me of saying, okay, what else can we do? And not just mm -hmm. being okay with what you have, like because you can always do better. You can always push yourself. And often, especially at a place like the theater, there's an inventory. Like we have a costume room filled with, you know, beads and stuff like that that are at our disposal. Let's go look at the inventory and see what we have. So, um, ever since Aladdin, I had uh, put a little extra care into those finer things mm -hmm. um, because people notice, and it really makes it really wonderful. So what happens to things like Sven and like the big Chinese dragon and like the various props that you make over the years? What happens to them when the show's done? Well, they belong to the theater. Okay. And uh, a lot of the time they're just taken apart because I'm sure the Chinese dragon's no longer with us. There's just no room no. to store. Which is unfortunate because... You never know when you could use a Chinese dragon. One of the great things about Oxford County is we'll often reach out to other theaters to say, listen, we have this great thing. We can't keep yeah. it anymore. Who would benefit from having this? And we've also, in my time, um, we did a Little Mermaid at the theater for our summer camp a few years ago. And mm -hmm. our friends at K2K had done it um, prior to that, which you made the costumes I for. I did, yeah. And so colorful and made a pool noodles and stuff like that too, right? Mm -hmm. K to K approached us and said, listen, we have all this inventory. Right. So that made our job so easy to have really well-made costumes and set pieces at our disposal. So that's the beauty of a, a smaller community theater world is that we all like to help each other out as much as we can. So yeah. to Lori's point, we do try to find homes for these yeah. things, but honestly, not everything can make it. It, it. It's just the world we live in. I was very sad when the big martini glass went away. I, I mean, who, so hard, Deb, when I saw that on stage. We could all use a big martini glass, could uh, we? The biggest martini glass I've ever seen. Yeah. I wanted to just jump right inside. Yeah, that was <laughs> during Drowsy, Drowsy Chaperone. Chaperone. Yeah. And uh, there's a song uh, that the character comes out in. Uh, it was like a seven, six, seven foot tall martini glass that mm -hmm. Deb had made on wheels. And she's dancing around the stage with this thing. <laughs> it and it had great. a giant olive. It was like a pillow, like a, this big olive with yeah. a uh, toothpick through it yeah. Yeah. that sat inside of it. And uh, I had a lot of fun making that with you. And that was a very tricky piece to make. Oh, that was really hard. Because yeah. the balance of it, because it's so top heavy. And there's a lot of reasons why that was a tricky piece. Mm -hmm. Now, sharing pieces, Deb, you made years ago, you had made an Audrey II uh, and that is a character from Little Shop of Horrors. Yes. And Audrey's a plant um, that starts off as kind of a little potted plant mm -hmm. and craves humans. Oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> Seymour uh, has, uh, that's his plant, and he uh, is pulled into feeding Audrey too, which is the name of the plant. Mm -hmm. And Audrey grows, 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 grows. And so tell us a bit about your experience of creating an Audrey too. Oh, I, that was one of the biggest jobs I've ever done. And there were actually four puppets uh, for Audrey too. There's the little baby one in the copy right. tin. And then there's one where the actor has his hand up through the pot and manipulates the mouth of the puppet. Mm. And his, he has a, a real arm 
holding the pot, and then you put a fake arm through a jacket right. and glue it to the other side of the pot. So, so it looks that, like it's his two hands holding the pot, but exactly. in reality one of his hands is actually up inside the pot. Yeah, and then the third one is uh, an actor inside a giant pod, and he manipulates the pod uh, with his arms, and his legs are vines, and he's sitting on a pot. Okay. And then the, the last one is enormous, and it's big enough for when the jaws open up for a body to be eaten and because uh, a performer goes in goes right, right in, in the, the mouth. mouth yeah so huh. it's massive <laughs> it's a massive piece. incredible scene and and yeah. your audrey too has traveled canada has it not it's been coast to coast yeah yeah all over the place uh, i think about seven different theaters now and uh you got to be so proud like, to know that so I'm many really people proud. are able to enjoy your, your work. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I keep track of where she's at. Yeah, <laughs> what she's up to. <laughs> what she's up to, where she's going next. She's eating all the people yeah. she needs. Yeah, and, yeah. and I get a lot of requests. Uh, for it, but you know, it's not lo it's no longer mine. Yeah, so you can tell so. them where it is so they can try to find her, right. but it's not up to you. That's right. Which has yeah. got to kind of sting a little bit. Like, cause it does. It's still yours. It is. It's <laughs> hard to let them go. It's your baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You also have um, some experience in, in prop making, mm -hmm. and earlier I was talking about the detail of things. So uh, I heard that you were in a show a few years ago. Uh, Dixie Swim Club, I think, is what it oh, was. Yes. Yeah. And you had made a basket of blueberries mm -hmm. that was all faux. It, like, it was all prop. It was not yeah. real food. But people were actually coming up, intending oh, yes. to eat them, because you oh, yes. individually plain, painted every blueberry in this basket. I what? did. I did. So <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, from an audience, you wouldn't really notice that. But it reads incredibly... And especially when you can trick people mm -hmm. at close range, that is a that's yeah, a skill, that's right? Amazing. I do remember too uh, when we did Greece. There's kind of a, a rec room scene in the basement, and they're having a little party and stuff. And they had a bowl of potato chips. Now, as a producer, you're like, oh my gosh, there's gonna be crumbs all over the stage, and they can kind of <laughs> be greasy and like mm -hmm. all these things. And you don't want an actor like <laughs> on stage. Or, or God forbid, choke on something. So anyways, you had uh, a bowl of potato chips and I believe it was really just like a, a crinkle cut plastic sheeting. Like exactly. maybe you'd put it like in a drawer or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It's a liner. Yeah. yeah. And you cut them out, I believe, into kind of potato chip shapes. Mm -hmm. And didn't you kind of like melt them in a way so they kind of form, like they kept that You didn't curtain? even need to do that. No, it they just are the easiest prop to make. I love really? making potato chips. Yeah. Um, so you just uh, spray it lightly with an adhesive, which makes the plastic paintable. Right. And then you put a thin glaze of color on it uh, with a little bit of uh, shiny varnish. Uh, let both sides dry, but you still want it to be kind of a little bit translucent. Right. You know, so... And the actual, the roll of this liner plastic holds its shape, so they actually curl naturally. Hmm. And you just throw them in a bowl, and they look just like potato chips. How do they taste? Oh, well, not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still Check chewing it. on it. It's yeah. not going out. <laughs> I used to run um, faux food prop making courses in Stratford. Right. And every once in a while, we'd have some kind of a fundraiser and display table out. And I'd always put a box of my Rio Thompson fake chocolates out. And almost always, by the end of the night, I'd find one of them with a bite mark in it oh. under the table. I bet. Yeah. Under the table? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How'd you enjoy that styrofoam? You know? Ooh. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. In your time at Stratford, I believe you also did a series of mask making workshops. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, that was a lot of fun. I it's bet. not the way I make masks now because uh, they had this wonderful thing called a vacuform machine okay. that would melt plastic. So you would um, take a, well, if you were working from an actor, you would actually do a plaster cast of their face. Huh. So you had everything in the right position. And then you would uh, get a, a shape of, of their head and you would put plasticine over it okay. and sculpt your wolf head or whatever kind of creature you were making. And then you'd put it in this machine and it would melt plastic right over top of it and oh. give you this wonderful hard shell. And then all you had to do was, you know, 
paint it up or add fabric and and also you made some uh, interesting masks for the Ember Thistle Theater did a show called Kai the Barbarian uh, a number of years ago and there were um, they were like masks on sticks, I believe, but right. they were very large, exaggerated human characters. Uh, I remember seeing those masks and thinking they were quite incredible. They were great fun. Uh, I went to the dollar store, one of my favorite places to get mm -hmm. supplies, and I got these giant skulls. And I just took foam and stuff and I carved into them and I added foam to them until I kind of made faces right. out of them. and. Hmm paper bache the whole thing to give it a nice texture and painted it up. Yeah, but it's really cool. Yeah. I think he used yarn as a hair and stuff yeah, like that. All sorts of stuff. Your ability to vision, you know, to have the vision to envision how to do it. Yeah. Like I would be somebody who's like, okay, this again, the final product that I want to see. Mm -hmm. But I've had I would have no idea Where do you how start? to get there. Well and mm -hmm. so often too I would have a, a set piece or or um, prop in mind and I would be trying to figure out how I would do it and I would have my this is how Mike would do it right. and then but Deb do you want to come check my work <laughs> like how would you like does this make sense to you mm. and you would often go oh there's so, so much easier way to do this than that Mike and then you would show me how it would be cheaper to do it this way and easier for the performers to use and all sorts of stuff yeah so your masks are, are something else uh going Mike, back yeah Mike do you mind my inter uh interrupting you here I wanted to ask we, we just heard about what was the uh the easiest, the chips were the easiest. Can I ask, what's the most difficult thing you've had to create? Or mm. the most difficult process or prop you have had to create? Well, honestly, uh, building Sven, I think, is one of the hardest really? things Yeah, oh. I've had to make. Uh, to make a life-size reindeer that can walk across the stage. That's amazing. Head mm. can move, And can a single talk, performer as well, too. And a single child performer. So I had to make it very lightweight and somehow make it comfortable and not too intimidating for them. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was tricky. Very cool. Can I say one of the best costumes I've ever seen? And I mean ever. Mm -hmm. Not just your work. Ever. Was... Ursula the Sea Witch mm. and WCI did The Little Mermaid. I need one of those, Deb. <laughs> well, what does one have to do oh. to get an Ursula costume? <laughs> uh, because, I mean, that's just my personality anyway, right? So I'm got to go all out. Yeah. Mike, you be You're quiet. The over there. You're the quiet. living Ursula. You're the living Ursula. You will become oh. a poor, unfortunate soul. Yes. Um, no, but that was. We will share a picture of this. Mm -hmm. It was incredible, this costume. And I was just uh, like gobsmacked when I, when she came out on stage. Well, and the, the way you did it too, I believe. Now, I wasn't a part of that production, mm -hmm. but I did enjoy it. I got to see it as an audience member. Um, but it almost looked as though you had kind of like a dress, but it was like the extra tentacles. Was it almost like a, a belt that went on that they wore around it? Or were those tentacles sewn right into the they costume? They were sewn right, right onto the Holy dress. Holy man, right? that's a lot of work. Yeah. It and was beautiful to look at. And, and just, I had to make oh. them very lightweight yeah. and uh, wired so that they would curl up the way they need yeah, to. Yeah, it was just amazing. And, and part of it, too, uh, for a show like, like Little Mermaid, um, it was double cast, which means there's two, two. performers playing Ursula oh, on different yeah. nights. Mm -hmm. So it's two dresses. <laughs> is it do you do you get lucky that one that both performers get to wear the same dress, or do you have to make two of those? It depends. Right. On it the depends on the size. Uh, I did design it so that both of the girls could wear oh, it. That's I had a lace up back on the side okay. and lacing up on the side, which I thought kind of went with the design of the costumes yeah. in that time period anyway. Yeah. So uh, that made it a bit easier. But uh, I'm, I'm always praying that the director will cast a double cast with people who are somewhat so similar. Yes. <laughs> I want to also share, so Deb and I last was that September? When when were we in our show together? It's October. Oh, was that October? October yeah. Last yeah. October, 2022, mm -hmm. uh, Deb and I were on stage for the first time together. We were. Um, we were in Calendar Girls, and Deb, you did such a great job. Your character in that played. If you, I, I believe we talked about Calendar Girls at yeah, the time. Yeah, we did. And the performers having to be on stage, uh, strategically placed behind things, but for the most part nude. Yeah. And just having things placed so the audience couldn't see. And your character was 
shy. She did not <laughs> want to do it at all, did she? No, Ruth mm -hmm. was very reticent. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she kind of blossoms at the end of the show, which was my favorite thing. It, one of yeah. the, yeah, it, you, and you did such a beautiful job. Your character kind of has a pinnacle moment where it's a realization and she's kind of telling somebody how it is and uh, very out of character for Ruth, but that mm -hmm. was how we knew she was she was finding herself and yeah, it was, uh, you did a really great job of that and I would Thank love you. to perform with you again one day. Uh, do you, out of the things, if you had to be involved in a production in one capacity mm. and would you prefer performing, like is there a, one of these things, performing costume set, props, is there something you're like, I would be first in line for this part of it? Well, I'll surprise you, I love stage managing. I don't huh. get the chance very often, okay. but I have actually stage managed a few professional shows and it was just the best experience. That's amazing. Yeah, I really loved wow. it. Mm -hmm. If there was a particular show that you could work on, yeah, that's mm. good. what show would you say, oh, I, I would be the absolute best at making stuff for? Well, I don't think the rights are out there yet, but if they ever did Nightmare... What is it, Nightmare Before Christmas? Yep, Nightmare Before oh, Christmas. Oh yeah, my gosh, I, I would that. love to get into some Tim Burton That'd be amazing. Yeah. costume type work. Awesome. That'd be amazing. Ooh. I can see <laughs> like some black light and stuff yeah. being in a show like yeah. that oh, too. Oh, black light would be fun too. Have you done a black light show before? Uh, I've only done a few little props. I was assisting someone else, mm. uh, but uh, a black light show would be amazing. I bet you even Beetlejuice would be fun to do. Oh, yeah. it would. Yeah. That would be so fun. I wonder with the big renovation they're doing at WCI whether they might be able to do black light someday. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because the school's getting a whole transformation of their auditorium. Yeah. So outside of all the, the theater world stuff, you are a visual artist as well. You right. paint mm -hmm. very beautifully. Um, are you working on any paintings right now? I have three on the go. What are they on? <laughs> what are, what's your inspiration behind those? Uh, one of them is uh, actually an egg cup with an egg. Okay. And a spoon yeah. and uh, crazy looking lighting in it. And it's just kind of a dramatic piece for this poor little uh, elephant egg cup. Right. <laughs> and um, let's see. Oh, I'm doing a painting of a cat. I like to do animals. Mm -hmm. And the other one is kind of a copy of an old master's because I'm learning uh, a new medium. Okay. I've never okay. worked in oil paint, so oh, that's right. something new. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, Great. Deb, I'm really grateful for your, your time with us today. This has been such a treat. Mm -hmm. And so when is when is Frozen opening? Uh, I don't have actual dates yet, right. uh, but I believe it'll be in May of 2024. Okay. Oh, so you're getting nice and ahead of all this I stuff. I am because I'm going to oh. be so busy with Bye Bye Birdie yeah. for WCI. So. And so uh, the Bye Bye Birdie that you're working on at WCI, that is uh, in December. December. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so keep an eye out for that. And mm -hmm. what are you doing for Bye Bye Birdie? You're doing costume and set. Costumes and set. Holy yeah. moly. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, thank Deb. You. This has been such a pleasure. And uh, we look forward to working with you on, on other theater related things in the future. Um, to our audience, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Rob, thanks for having us out here. This has been a, a great time. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Nice to have everybody out. Nice to be outside and enjoying the sunshine. And yeah. even though it's hot, but it's still <laughs> I still like it. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the wasps for uh, mm -hmm. contributing as yeah. well today. Yes. Uh, yeah, we got lots uh, of those yeah. around. Adding That's to the ambiance sure. of right. it all. Keep I it saw exciting. one walking in Mike's hair a little bit uh, a little yeah, bit ago. And I think it's still in there. Yeah. <laughs> Special guest. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, thank you to our audience for joining us, and we will see you next time on Out for Coffee. With Mike and Lori. Do you have questions, comments, or ideas for a future show? Reach out to Mike and Lori on their social media Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or email us at Mike and Lori Socials at gmail.com. 